Hello there, poetry family. Today I wanted to talk to you about one of my favorite poets, Sylvia Plath. And Sylvia Plath was a very famous American poet who lived from 1932 until 1963. She only lived to be age 30, but she wrote a whole lot of poetry. Um, she was clinically depressed for most of her life and had several suicide attempts, which uh, did end in her taking her own life. Um, she had a rather terrible marriage to a poet named Ted Hughes, who later became the Poet Laureate of Britain. And um, why was she so depressed? Well, aside from the terrible marriage, just being a housewife in the 1950s, when you're only in your 20s and you have two small children and you're trying to be an artist, you're getting up at four in the morning trying to write. Um, and a lot of her poems are about the life um, that is struggling to come out of this, this trap that she's in. And um, the struggle she has with her, her mental health and um, the, the situation. So I'm going to read one of her most famous poems, but I'm also going to read two less famous poems. So let me get my readers real quick. Here we go. And if we're ready, I give you Sylvia Plath. The Surgeon at 2 a.m. The white light is artificial and hygienic as heaven. The microbes cannot survive it. They are departing in their transparent garments, turned aside from scalpels and rubber hands. The scalded sheet is a snowfield, frozen and peaceful. The body under it is in my hands. As usual, there is no face. A lump of Chinese white with seven holes thumbed in. The soul is another light. I have not seen it. It does not fly up. Tonight it has receded like a ship's light. It is a garden I have to do with. Tubers and fruit oozing their jammy substances, a mass of roots. My assistants hook them, hook them back. Stenches and colors assail me. This is the lung tree. These orchids are splendid. They spot and coil like snakes. The heart is a red bell bloom in distress. I am so small in comparison to these organs. I worm and hack in a purple wilderness. The blood is a sunset. I admire it. I am up to my elbows in it, red and squeaking. Still it seeps up. It is not exhausted, so magical. A hot spring I must seal off and let fill the intricate blue piping under this pale marble. How I admire the Romans, aqueducts, the baths of Caracalla, the eagle nose. The body is a Roman thing. It has shut its mouth on the stone pill of repose. It is a statue the orderlies are wheeling off. I have perfected it. I am left with an arm or leg, a set of teeth or stones to rattle in a bottle and take home and tissue in slices a pathological salami. <laughs> Tonight, the parts are entombed in an ice box. Tomorrow, they will swim. It's vinegar like saints' relics. Tomorrow, the patient will have a clean pink plastic limb. Over one bed in the ward, a small blue light announces a new soul. The bed is blue. Tonight, for this person, blue is a beautiful color. The angels of Morphia have borne him up. He floats an inch from the ceiling, smelling the dawn drafts. I walk among sleepers in gauze sarcophagi. The red night lights are flat moons. They are dull with blood. I am the sun in my white coat. Gray faces shuddered by drugs follow me like flowers. I told you she was good. Okay, now for one of her most famous poems. 
that um, quite obviously has to do with her repeated suicide attempts. It's called Lady Lazarus. I have done it again, one year in every 10, I manage it. A sort of walking miracle, my skin, bright as a Nazi lampshade, my right foot a paperweight, my face a featureless fine Jew linen. Peel off the napkin, oh, my enemy, do I terrify? The nose, the eye pits, the full set of teeth, the sour breath will vanish in a day. Soon, soon, the flesh, the grave cave eight will be, at home on me, and I, a smiling woman, am only thirty. And like the cat, I have nine times to die. This is number three. What a trash to annihilate each decade. What a million filaments the peanut crunching crowd shoves in to see. Them unwrap me hand and foot, the big strip tease. Gentlemen, ladies, these are my hands and knees. I may be skin and bone. Nevertheless, I am the same identical woman. The first time it happened, I was 10. It was an accident. The second time I meant to last it out and not come back at all. I rocked shut as a seashell. They had to call and call and pick the worms off me like sticky pearls. Dying is an art. Like everything else, I do it exceptionally well. I do it so it feels like hell. I do it so it feels real. I guess you could say I have a call. It's easy enough to do in a cell. It's easy enough to do it and stay put. It's the theatrical come back in broad day to the same place, the same face, the same brute animal shout, a miracle that knocks me out. There is a charge for the eyeing of my scars. There is a charge for the hearing of my heart. It really goes and there is a charge, a very large charge for a word or a touch or a bit of blood or a piece of hair or my clothes. So, so, hair doctor. So, so, hair enemy. I am your opus. I am your valuable, the pure gold baby that melts to a shriek. I turn and burn. Do you not think I underestimate your great concern? Ash, ash, you poke and stir. Flesh, bone, there is nothing there. A cake of soap, a wedding ring, a gold filling. Hair God, hair Lucifer, beware, beware. Out of the ash I rise with my red hair, and I eat men like air. And you could probably tell why that one's so famous. It just, wow. <laughs> okay, so let's wind down with something a little, a little less intense. Um, this one is called Mystic. The air is a mill of hooks, questions without answer, glittering and drunk as flies, whose kiss stings unbearably in the fetid wombs of black air under pines in summer. I remember the dead smell of sun on wood cabins, the stiffness of sails, the long salt of winding sheets. Once one has seen God, what is the remedy? Once one has been seized up, without a part left over, not a toe, not a finger, and used, used utterly, in the sun's conflagrations, the stains that lengthen from ancient cathedrals, what is the remedy? The pill of the communion tablet, the walking beside still water, memory, or picking up the bright pieces of Christ in the face of rodents, the tame flower nibblers, the one whose hopes are so low they are comfortable, the humpback in his small washed cottage under the spokes of the clematis, is there no great love, only tenderness? Does the sea remember the walker upon it? Meaning leaks from the molecules. The chimneys of the city breathe. The window sweats. The children leap in their cots. The sun blooms. It is a geranium. The heart has not stopped. Thank you for sharing this time with me, poetry family. I'll see you next time.